guys welcome to my channel so i'm going to talk about the five powerful ways to set boundaries after abuse and why it is important okay right i'm just going to get straight into this video um it's it's, it's, it's deep but i'm just gonna give you the five tips so you can just number one be clear and direct okay we don't want no confusion okay so for example if you're doing the drop off with um your child's father or children's father you want to be very precise about the time okay we're going to meet at this location at 5 p.m um not okay around five five ish 5 p.m on the dot i'm going to give you 10 minutes grace period and then we're leaving okay this just ensures that there's no confusion because if you said five ish five ish could be 520 525 there's no time <clears throat> so just to be sure 5 p.m with 10 minutes to spare so they know exactly what's going on you can be very clear and direct about how you will be spoken to how you will not be spoken to um how children the children have to be in bed by nine o'clock there's no phones after seven be very particular about this and i realized what my problem was before was i didn't have i was kind of just going with the flow with the motherhood i didn't actually have like a plan i didn't have any bullet points of you know you know bed by eight this by this this by this i didn't have like a routine a schedule for my child so it was very very hard to try and put boundaries down when you're all over the place with your child anyway so definitely get in a routine with your child so it's easy and clear for you to make those clear and direct um messages and set them boundaries <clears throat> excuse me use written communication so one of my friends who's also a single mum to two beautiful girls she uses i forgot the name i'm gonna get the name and hopefully i could try and put it in the description she uses an app a parenting app where um her and the abuser aka her child's father um can talk and communicate via that app so there's no confusion so there's no abuse happening and this is all um viewed by the court so the courts have um access to this and they can see this either way um this is proof so any gaslighting any lying any any confusion that happens if he says i didn't say i was going to take them at 5 p.m on saturday there's proof there that he did say that <clears throat> excuse me guys <clears throat> now number three physical boundaries so we've got um physical boundaries could be you're not allowed to come to the to the house we have to meet at the local park um maybe your family members sisters friends are the ones that do the drop-offs and the pick up and the pickups um if you don't want to do that with them which most of the time we don't um this just makes it easier because you know even with neutral locations they still find a way to trigger you they still find things to say and make arguments and get very abusive when you're trying to drop off the kids and that can obviously set you off and you get quite emotional um for me um nobody wanted to do the drop off for me but if you have people in your corner that don't mind um and that are free as well because that's another thing people are busy that are free enough to do the drop offs if not if you have to do the drop offs yourself then um just ignore them because they're gonna chat rubbish and just be like okay cool yep yeah, five o'clock see you at seven da, 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 keep it moving stay away from them don't look at them don't give them any eye contact don't don't give in to their rubbish okay number five and it's so important is self-care okay so eating the right do you know what even saying it is just like am i literally repeating other people's message but for me when i cut out eating junk food i still eat junk food now and then when i want to pig out or you know it's maybe like a friday or a saturday I may eat junk food, so I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm the best and I'd only eat plants. No, but I try to do cooking at home. It's cheaper, it's easier, it's better. You know what's in your food and it's, it's just better for you. So healthy foods, you know, um, one of my friends said something that I thought was really good. And that's to start eating more healthy 
just add like more fruits and vegetables in with your dinner so still eat what you eat like home cooked meals but just try add some broccoli some carrots try add some salads one of my friends has veg and salad with every meal that is technically eating healthy drink more water eat more fruits if you're peckish after dinner and you, and you have a sweet tooth like me try um having some oranges sometimes you're just thirsty <laughs> so definitely concentrate on your food look at your food try and add with me to for me and, and habits i feel like taking away something i'm gonna fail i'm gonna go back to it but if i just add something like add some fruit add some veg it will help and um, yeah exercise now I know, as, especially single mothers, we cannot make it to the gym if our children are a certain age, especially for me. Um, so there's lots of at-home workouts. I have two kettlebells that I use at home. I've got a um, yoga mat. There's so much things you can do. Um, I can actually leave in the description below some of the things that I actually have at home already. Um, that I do my workouts with I'm telling you it makes a huge difference especially after leaving that abuser for me it was the night times where I found that it was it was really hard to to concentrate because that's the time we used to chill together so I would just work out at night because in the morning I'm not getting up I've got so much to do we have kids we've got cooking we've got cleaning we've got school drop-offs it's just not ideal unless you're one of those amazing parents that are up at five, six o'clock before the kids and you have that half an hour, an hour to do it. If you do, morning sessions are always better. But for me, I'm lazy, I like to sleep in and yeah, that's just, it's not gonna happen. So those are the five powerful ways to set boundaries after abuse. So number one, be clear and direct. Number two, use written communication, text, emails. Try not take them phone calls because there's times when I've been abused via phone calls and I have no proof that he said some of the most disgusting things that he has said to me. Number three, physical boundaries. Again, no touching, don't let them hug you, don't don't look at them. <laughs> um, try to get friends to do the drop-offs. These are just some examples. Number four, seek legal support. When I got that restraining order, when I got that restraining order, things changed. He felt so entitled to come to my house whenever he felt like it, which is usually 11 o'clock at night for some reason when the kids sleep in. I don't know what he was trying to achieve by doing that. But getting that restraining order, I know it sounds crazy, especially if you are someone who, I don't know, don't believe in going to the police or getting people involved. I am telling you that is one of the best decisions I've made in my life is getting a restraining order. Yes, it may make them upset. Yes, it may make them mad that you're getting a restraining order. But this is to protect you and your babies from them and their nonsense. Okay? So definitely, I, I recommend, again, I'm not a legal advisor. So definitely get legal advice before making any rash decisions. But for me, that, that changed my life differently. Um, I was still getting abused by that particular person. But it wasn't on the same level and I was actually able to heal. You can't heal if they're just pulling up at your house and they're following you and they're stalking you. Like, you just can't. Um, Self-care. When I started to get obsessed with learning how to do makeup, obsessed with learning how to do my hair, um, I started doing press-on nails. Um, uh, what else? Started to learn how to do cluster lashes. Like, I am so focused on my um my beauty and saving money so i'm definitely a diy diy girly to the death of me so this is why self-care is so important but starting out just making sure every friday I have a hot bubble bath a lot of the time we don't feel like having baths because it's just like it's wasting time you've got things to do right but it's very very important it's very important if you need more tips <laughs> Or if you want help with your personal life situation, I do one-on-one -on -one phone consultations. So click the link um, or email me, escapingthemadness2021 at gmail.com in the description. And let's heal together, okay? Also, follow me on TikTok if you haven't done already. And let's heal together. And remember, mama, they're looking at you. Mama, they need you to be happy and healthy. And mama, you can do it by yourself. There's so many of us doing it by ourselves. You can do it, okay? Anyway, for my next video, thank you for watching. If you got to the very end, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you for my next video.